Welcome back to Madman Review. This is your host, Mike. So, you've got your AR-15, which is cool and all, but then there's the Mini-14, which is, honestly, in a league of its own. I mean, have you shot one of these? Pure fun, I promise you. Take a shot with one, and you're gonna be like, where have you been all my life? There's this old talk about it not being super accurate. You know, especially among the older crowd. But hey, back in 2003, Ruger totally revamped it. By 2005, the new designs were out. They've got the solid scope base, cool rear sight, and a front sight that reminds you of the Ruger police carbine. Those are the 580 series Mini 14s, knowing to hit that sweet 1 MOA accuracy, and if you've got the right bullets, some guys have even scored sub MOA groups. Now, let me lay down my 8 reasons why, if I gotta choose, I'm reaching for the Mini 14 over the AR 15. Number 8 Complete Gun When you get the Mini 14, it's ready to roll straight from the shelf. It's like grabbing a burger and adding your own special sauce, slap on a scope, maybe a mo rod, do a bit with the trigger, and you're set. It's factory tested and good to go. Now, I've seen some ARs fail, probably because they're like those build your own pizza places with a billion options, too many parts from too many brands. Some folks just slap them together without really knowing the drill, which is why getting a secondhand AR, not on my list. If ARs are your thing and you're not a gun geek, grab one that's all set from the start. Like the Smith & Wesson Sporter, top-notch and good to go. Heck, Jerry Michelock swears by it. Number 7. Rock & Lock Mag System Now, some folks will tell you that the Rock & Lock Magazine System on the Mini 14 is a minus, but man, I see it as a big plus. You know how with some big guns? You try to shove in a full mag, and the thing just refuses to stay put? I've seen it a ton with ARs. You think it's in there real snug? But nope, it can drop out. It's not unusual to see someone's mag just plop out right after the first shot, but with the Mini 14's rock-in style, you don't have any of that when you're doing a quick mag switch. Imagine you're in some intense scenario. Not that I'm hoping you are, but if you had to swap a half-empty mag for a full one, it's smooth. You can drop the used one, pick a fresh one, and because there's still a bullet in the chamber, you're not out of action. Here's a pro tip though. When loading up, always keep the last bullet on the left side. Doesn't matter if it's a 5-round or a 30-round magazine, I found that it's just easier that way, especially with the ones from Tapco, keeps things neat, and you're less likely to have those oops moments with bullets falling out. And hey, even if you're packing a 30 rounder, maybe load one or two bullets less. Just help things run smoother. I swear by the five round mags. So remember, last round, left side. Number six, open bolt design. AR-15s sometimes run into this weird issue where the spent brass gets stuck messing things up big time. Now, I haven't personally seen this, and it hasn't hit any of my ARs either, but it's a thing. They call it a brass over bolt malfunction. It's when that empty casing gets lodged over the bolt and just jams everything up. That's mainly because the top's covered. Now, with the Mini 14, none of that nonsense. It's got an open bolt design where you can see straight through. If there's a hiccup, I can get my hands in there, reach the barrel, or even use something like a screwdriver to get that annoying brass out. You can just shake it around and any junk falls right out. It's like having a convertible car. Just way cooler. But I know what you're thinking. Man, what about the rain or snow? Yeah, it's not great to have your guns soaked or muddy, but come on, keep them clean. While ARs have a protective flap, and AKs have their own cover system, I've taken the Mini 14 through all sorts of conditions, and never had to fail because of dirt. I mean, I don't swamp them in grease, and usually when I've seen one mess up, someone's gone overboard on the lube. So, yeah, that open bolt design? Super handy. Number 5. Low Mechanical Offset this is one nifty thing about the Mini 14 that maybe isn't the end-all be-all, but still pretty darn cool. Most ARs have this high-up mechanism, right? So when you slap a scope on it, it's floating like two or three inches above the barrel. 
That's fine and all until you're trying to nail a precise shot up close. You end up aiming a bit higher to compensate. Enter the Mini 14. With its low slung design, the scope or sights hug closer to the barrel, making for a tighter mechanical offset. The iron sights, they're practically kissing the barrel. This is a big win for distant shooting. With the standard iron sights, it's like shooting pool. Whether it's 25 yards or 100, it feels about the same. My go-to zeroing in at 100 yards, which keeps things neat and tight even stretching out to 200 or 300 yards. I mean, sure, there is a smidge of drop, but I've got sights with built-in compensators to handle that. Handy, right? Number 4. Can fire with a stock folded. One neat trick with the Mini 14. You can pop off shots with a stock folded. Since all the spring action is up in the foregrip, Folding the stock doesn't cramp its style. Now, if you're in a state that's cool with folding stocks, that's a big win. Imagine you're just patrolling or wandering your land. Having the stock folded means no awkward face bumping. Trust me, if you've spent a day with the stock kissing your cheek, you'll get why this is a big deal. Now, I've heard folks say, hey, ARs can get those snazzy foldable stocks too. Sure they can. But here's the catch. You need a special adapter. And yeah, there's stuff like the dead foot arm system, which does let you shoot an AR with its stock folded, but man, that'll set you back around 600 bucks. Cheaper options like the Law Tactical Folding Stock Adapter will only let you fire one shot when folded. After that, you're unfolding it to keep the action going. I get that the Ruger Mini 14 Tactical's price tag can be a bit steep compared to some ARs, but if you scout around, you might snag one for $1,100. And remember, it comes fold-ready and doesn't fuss about shooting while folded. Cool beans, huh? Number 3. Completely ambidextrous Here's the beauty of the Mini 14. It doesn't care if you're a righty or a lefty. This bad boy is fully ambidextrous. Bolt release? Smack dab in the middle, easy to reach from either side. Safety right there in the center, making it a breeze whether you're using your left or right hand. The design is mirrored on both sides, so there's no this side's better nonsense. Now, think about places like California where the gun scene gets a bit quirky with fins and safeties that cater more to one side. Being left-handed there is kind of like trying to write with the wrong hand. With the Mini 14, it's a non-issue. Slide your finger in, push forward, and bam, you're in action. Magazine release works like a charm, whether you're doing it southpaw or the usual way. For all the lefties out there, or even righties who like options, the Mini 14's got your back. Number 2 Piston Driven The Mini 14 runs on pistons. For the non-gun nerds, that basically means they're way more reliable. I've made a bunch of videos explaining the whole deal, but here's the short version. The Mini 14 has this neat self-cleaning piston system going on right at the front. Now, let's talk ARs for a second. They use what's called a direct impingement system. Picture this. There's a tiny hole in the barrel, right? So when you fire off around, it sends gas pressure back to the bolt, dumping all that pressure and gunk right into the gun's guts. I mean, why would you want to dirty up the exact spot that needs to stay clean? Makes no sense. Couple more issues with that system. It turns that section into a mini oven, getting super hot. You get this burst of gas coming out, which isn't the best if you're using suppressors. If you've ever tried suppressing an AR, you know there's some tweaking to be done, like changing springs and other adjustments. But back to the Mini 14, thanks to its piston-driven nature, it gets rid of the gas right into the stock. It's a game changer. Plus, you don't have to lube them as much. Most gun malfunctions I've seen, lack of lube. Long story short, if I'm ever caught in a wild zombie apocalypse scenario and I gotta grab a gun quick, I'm reaching for the Mini 14. Out of the box, it's like the Swiss Army knife of guns. Reliable and always ready to go. Number 1. Less Threatening Than an AR-15 It's interesting how visuals can really shape people's perceptions. The Mini 14 in many ways benefits from its classic, almost vintage look. Let's dive into this. 
Walking into a range with a Mini 14, especially with a wooden stock, is an entirely different experience than showing up with an AR-15. The Mini 14 has this sort of throwback vibe, like something your grandpa might have used for varmint hunting on the farm. It's reminiscent of those old-school traditional hunting rifles that many grew up with. As a result, the reception is often much warmer and more welcoming. The AR-15, on the other hand, with its modern and tactical look, comes off as aggressive or military-grade, especially to anti-gun libturds. Even among some seasoned gun enthusiasts, the AR-15 still feels like the new kid on the block, a stark contrast to the old, reliable. Ironically, the Mini-14 and AR-15 both fire the 5.56 and 2.23, and with the Mini-14's slightly longer barrel, it might even deliver a bit more punch at distance. Still, public perception is everything. The Mini-14's design roots trace back to the M14, sometimes referred to as the M1A in its civilian semi-automatic version. This association to a well-known and widely accepted rifle further cements its status as a friendly firearm. Bill Ruger's original intent with the Mini-14 was to create a ranch rifle, a practical tool that a rancher could sling in their truck without a second thought. Given its lineage and design, it's arguably less threatening in appearance, making it more palatable for folks who are easily spooked by the more tactical look of the AR-15. To sum it up, while both rifles are equally capable, the Mini-14 wins the public relations battle, hands down. In the eyes of the public, it's just a regular old rifle, not something that belongs in a war zone. So if you want to shoot without drawing undue attention or concern, the Mini-14 might be your best bet. Perception is a powerful thing, after all. So that's my two cents. Don't like it? Drop your thoughts below. And if you're thinking, Man, this guy's clueless because he doesn't dig ARs. Hold up. I've got an AR and I love it just as much as I love my Mini-14. But here's the thing. If poop hits the fan, you might stumble upon an AR, but there's a good chance you'll find a Mini-14 too. You shouldn't dismiss it. If this was entertaining or helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.